Go ahead and put your overalls on, because you don't want your pants to get blown off. It's time for Cooney's Crafts. Today on Cooney's Crafts, we're going to be making something for your tushy. We're going to be making a stool. First things first, with any woodworking uh, kind of project, safety comes first. So, wood, you please remember to put on your safety glasses to protect your peepers, because it's the most important part about any kind of project. Now the first kind of thing that you're going to be uh, deciding here is what kind of wood you're going to be working with. Now there's all kinds of different kinds of woods and I don't claim to be an expert lumberjacksing or anything like that. But there's you got your dark woods, your light woods, and you've got your hard woods and your soft woods. These are important things to consider when you're making a stool because do you want a hard stool or do you want a soft stool? Frankly, I think it depends on what you eat. <laughs> Alright, now Fresh after uh, at dawn this morning, right after I had my cup of coffee and bowl of oats, I went out into the forest and I uh, went and selected my wood. I got a dark cedar wood here, and you can tell that it's a cedar because these lines right here. Notice these, these nice grooves in the wood. Now, all cedars have these lines because it's an actual nutrient transportation system known as photosynthesization. And what that does is it really makes a nice, dense, solid, portable, light, firm, wood that you can set your tushy on and it's really going to make a nice stool and I'm really excited about what this project's going to turn out like so we're going to go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to smoke your wood after you've decided what kind you're using because smoking the wood condensates the fibers and it improves the quality of the wood dramatically. I'm going to be using this 28 kilohertz Nelco fire smoker that I got at my local hardware store. Now, one thing that's important to remember when you're smoking your wood is that uh, fire smokers have an open flame. And little known fact about hardwoods is that they are flammable. So anytime you have an open flame and a hardwood in, in the same location, you need to make sure that you check the proximification of the two and uh, make sure that it's always a little more than three to seven inches. Here's a section that I've already smoked. You can see it right there that uh, I got a little too close right there and the, the wood started to burn um, but I wised up as I went down it and uh, you know I got this really nice condensicrated wood and it's gonna make for <laughs> who doggy is gonna be a great stool and obviously stools are much taller than these so we're gonna have to we're actually gonna have to go through a stretching process of the wood itself to make it into the beautiful stool that we're gonna be putting our little bands on. Using the rubber band technique that almost every uh, lumberjack knows is I've actually got that stretched out now. What you're going to need to do is actually stretch it out into four of these pieces and this is actually going to be the uh, legs of the stool. So, Cooney's Pop Quiz. How many legs does a stool have? One, twelve, three point seven five, or four? Trick question. A stool has as many legs as you make it with, because here at Cooney's Crafts, we, we encourage all kinds of creativity. Alright, so, once we've got our legs, obviously, this is going to be a really tall stool. Almost as tall as me. So we're going to need to go ahead and make this into little legs. And what you're going to need for that is your carpositator. Alright, now your carpositator, it's a tool that looks like this. You can go down to your uh, local hardware store and pick one up for about $1 to $30. And you're going to just... Find the places on the leg that you're going to want to do, and remember, take exact measurements. Right here, okay? And then you're going to take your carpacitator right here, and you're just going to squeeze it on down, just like this. Watch this. Notice the angle of the carpacitator. Right there. All right, now we've got a nice mark where we're going to make our cuts. So I'm going to go ahead and ask Cletus, my assistant, go ahead and bring in the woodcutter. All right, thank you, Cletus. Yeah, thank you, Cletus. All right then, so we're going to just go ahead and line it up just right. And actually, you know, this can be kind of dangerous, so I'm going to go ahead and 
Okay, so we've we've made our cut. You can tell it's a really nice and clean cut. It's important to make sure you have a clean cut because when you're bonding that your legs to the uh, the fanny side of the stool, then you're gonna have to make sure that that connection is real good. So uh, nice, clean, smooth cut. You can see. Um, uh, I didn't I didn't sand this down or anything. I just used some high level uh, some woodworking equipment that you can get on the eBay and. Uh, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna have to make four of these actual legs. So I got one right here started. I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and cut the rest in now. So we'll have four of them. You got your fanny cushion, okay? Notice that my fanny cushion is actually white because I used a uh, painter saw. And what a painter saw does is it actually applies a nice coat of paint when you cut the wood. So uh, this is just to make sure that any kind of insecticides uh, get sealed up in the fibers of wood and that it doesn't come out because you don't want that kind of stuff seeping into your clothing on your bottom when you're sitting on your stool. So that's why I went ahead and used the painter saw. And uh, we've got this, you know, nice finished product. Actually, all kinds of sawdust on it still. Little well known fact is sawdust is actually tree blood. And if you plant sawdust out in the uh, the open fields, then more trees will grow. So make sure you, after every, you know, woodworking project that you collect all your sawdust, don't throw it away. <laughs> make sure you collect it all. Uh, be good to the environmentalists and uh, just, you know, plant it outside. Make, make, make the forest stick. So, now I've got my fanny cushion here, and I've got, you know, one of my legs here, and I'm going to show you exactly the process that we're going to go through to get these legs bonded onto the fanny cushion. We're going to be taking some screws and bolts, okay, the nuts and bolts of the operation. We're going to be attaching four of them just like this, okay? One here, one here, one here. I'm just kidding about the last one, that's just a little joke. <laughs> eight quarter inch screws to, to bond these together and then use some kind of H bracket right here. And the H bracket is gonna give you a nice solid compound meat of where the legs meet the, the uh, you know what, we're gonna go ahead and fall, call this the, the fanny impactor. So after you've taken your four legs, you bond them to the fanny cushion, apply nice, uh, whatever color wood stain that you choose. I like the, I went with uh, dark sandstorm and, uh, you know, I came up with a finished product that I think everyone and their mom and pa will be proud of. So let's go ahead and take a look at our finished product. Crap fire, man, I made a table again. Go ahead and put your overalls on, because it's time for Cooney's crafts. And it's going to blow your pants off, which is why you need coveralls. <laughs>